Hello everybody, welcome back to another review, and as promised, today we are covering the Hidden Inventory slash Premature Death Arc, which kicked off Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 last summer, and man am I excited to talk about this. As mentioned last week when I covered the Shibuya Incident, a video which you should all check out by the way, I said that at the end of that video that my hot take is that I think this arc is better than Shibuya, and I still stand by that. I've rewatched this arc to refresh my memory before writing this script, and yeah, I truly think this arc is a masterpiece, and it's absolutely outstanding television, and I'm here to tell you all why I believe that. Before we hop right into things, I must explain my color ranking system that I use. If you're already familiar with that, then you can skip to this timecode. If not, let me explain. I find it easier for me personally to rate TV shows by a color grade rather than individually giving each episode a number score. When I talk about each episode, the episode title will come on screen in the color of what I rated it, and those ratings are as follows. Purple, legendary, absolute peak fiction, I love everything about it. Blue is fantastic, I love mostly everything about it. Cyan is above average, pretty good, has fun moments, and you like a lot about it. Green is good, could be slow and have average moments, but you enjoyed it. Yellow is mid, probably slow or had moments you disliked, could just be boring. Orange, bad, I did not enjoy my time watching. And lastly, red, garbage, I hated watching this and I never want to watch it again. Alright ladies and gentlemen, with that, let's hop right into my review of the Hidden Inventory slash Premature Death Arc, kicking things off with the episode appropriately titled, Hidden Inventory, a fantastic introduction to this entire arc. I think my favorite part of this entire arc is the character work that is done throughout. Every single character gets something to do, which is not something that can be said about Shibuya or any previous JJK arc. I think this arc manages its use of characters pretty perfectly, with the only exception being Shoko, who I wish got more content. However, this episode begins with Utahime and Meimei trying to find a curse in a literal haunted house. Stuff like this is just so much fun, and it's during this scene that we learn more about Utahime than we do across the entire rest of the show up to this point, which brings me back to the point that I made that everyone gets something to do. I'm more connected with Utahime's past self and her 5 minutes of screen time than I am to the present day Utahime, because this Utahime actually gets characterization besides just hating Gojo. Obviously that character trait of hers is still present, but it's nice to see her do other things like discovering how to get out of the endless hallway the two are trapped in. Mei Mei is also great in this scene, even showing glimpses of her predatorial ways, publicly thirsting for Gojo, who is a minor at this point. If I was crying, would you console me? i definitely like that. But this is when we are introduced to Gojo, Ghetto, and Shoko for the first time. I think Shoko is genuinely my only real issue with this arc. I think it kinda sucks that she doesn't do anything. It makes narrative sense why she isn't going on Gojo and Ghetto's later mission, but it's just unfortunate that this is really the only character in this arc that doesn't have a fun or memorable moment. However, Gojo and Ghetto are amazing. Ghetto is easily the standout character of this arc, and his character arc is incredible but more on that later. Gojo is such a cool character during this arc as well. Obviously, he's still cool in the present day, but seeing his growth throughout this arc is such a fun and well-executed character transformation. We head back to Jujutsu High and get this extremely important conversation between Gojo and Geto. Gojo thinks it's exhausting protecting the weak, whereas Geto is basically the poster child of protecting the weak and sees it as being a sorcerer's job to protect the weak. This is what's so fantastic about this arc. These are our two main character stances at the beginning of this arc, and by the end, it is completely flipped. When we first see these two on screen, Gojo is just straight up an arrogant asshole, bullying Utahime for being weak, and Ghetto is his wholesome friend whose goal is to protect the weak with his Jujutsu sorcery. And by the end of the arc, Gojo is the lovable guy we know from the present, and Ghetto is on a genocidal mission to kill the weak. And it's an incredibly well-written and executed arc. Anyways, Gojo and Geto are sent on their mission, which is to retrieve Riko Amanai, the star plasma vessel, protect her from those trying to assassinate her, and ultimately make sure her assimilation with Tengen all goes to plan. We see Geto and Gojo encounter some men from Q, one of the groups trying to kill Riko, and we end off the episode by seeing Toji for the first time, a mercenary hired by the other group trying to kill Riko, the Time Vessel Association. Hidden Inventory 2 is another super well-crafted and fun episode. We meet Riko in depth for the first time, and what a fucking fantastic character she is. We see she is content with being assimilated into Tengen, but still wants to live the rest of her normal life while she still can, so she goes to school for the day. My soul will live on after the assimilation! You changed your home screen? Isn't she hot? Listen! 
We also meet Kuroi as well, who is Riko's caretaker, and she's another fun character to have in this squad. We meet back up with Toji, and we learn his plan. He plants a 48-hour, 30 million yen bounty on Riko's head, with the intent being to wear down Gojo after he is forced to constantly fight and be on guard for the next 48 hours. Gojo, Geto, and Kuroi head to the school to retrieve Riko after learning she's in danger. Gojo finds Riko, and we get this super fun scene where everyone is hitting on Gojo. I've always had issues when people dislike scenes like this and call them filler, with another example being the baseball episode in season 1. Just because these scenes aren't directly advancing the immediate plot doesn't mean they're filler. These scenes help us learn so much more about our characters. Yeah, you can have all the incredibly animated fights you want, but if you aren't invested in your characters, then why care? And I'm not dissing JJK when I say that. I think JJK fights are fantastic and greatly character driven. I'm just generalizing. But yeah, this scene is super fun and I love it. Ghetto ends up fighting some old guy and destroys him. And lastly, Kuroi ends up fighting this baghead guy and puts up a solid fight. Gojo ends up fighting this guy as well, and he explains his curse technique in depth. His explanation while beating this guy is another fantastic scene. However, this episode ends when Riko receives a text learning that Kuroi has been captured. Hidden Inventory 3 is easily my favorite Jujutsu Kaisen episode, period. This episode literally has it all. Drama, comedy, incredible character work, an amazing fight scene, and so much more. This episode begins with the gang easily saving Kuroi, and that leads us into one of my favorite moments of this arc. Gojo and Riko are having fun at the beach, but it's time to go back to Jujutsu Hyde to complete the mission. However, Gojo extends their stay by a day, allowing Riko to live out her last day in peace. What a fantastic character moment from Gojo here, and yeah, the following scene is absolutely phenomenal. We see Riko living out her last day, and the aquarium scene makes me tear up every time. Breathtaking visuals alongside the amazing score just make this moment special. We head back to Jujutsu High and the mission is over. Everything went according to plan and Gojo finally releases his technique, only to be stabbed in the back by Toji. Everything actually went according to plan for Toji, who successfully wore down Gojo and got the jump on him. Geto, Riko, and Kuroi all begin to rush to Tengen to complete the assimilation whilst Gojo deals with Toji. This leads us to Gojo vs Toji, which is a fantastic fight. During the fight, we learn all about Toji. He is a heavenly restriction user, meaning he has zero cursed energy, but he's absolutely cracked, as all of his five senses are extremely heightened. He also has a bunch of different cursed tools at his disposal, residing in the stomach of his little cursed spirit friend. Gojo levels the battlefield to get rid of any cover, because Gojo can't sense Toji's cursed energy as he has none. However, Toji uses a bunch of flyheads as cover, and uses the inverted Spear of Heaven, a cursed tool designed to deactivate cursed techniques, to break through Gojo's Limitless and kill him. Meanwhile, Riko and Kuroi say their heartfelt goodbyes, and Geto leads Riko to Tengen. This is absolutely the best scene of the entire arc right here. Ghetto gives Riko the choice to go assimilate with Tengen or continue to live the rest of her regular life with he and Gojo being prepared to fight Tengen if necessary. Riko accepts the offer as the ending music begins to play, ready to live out the rest of her life, a true happy ending to this JJK episode. Yeah, yeah that happens. Toji shoots Riko in the head, killing her. An absolutely devastating death scene. This death hurts so much, and it's all thanks to the incredible writing of Riko throughout this arc. When we first meet her, we see her content with assimilating with Tengen. Then throughout the next couple of episodes, we see her just being happy and living her life, and good guy Ghetto giving her the choice of if she wants to continue living or not, and her accepting it just to get that stripped away from her moments later. It's absolutely heartbreaking. But this leads to Ghetto scoring up to fight Toji to actually end this episode. Hidden Inventory 4 is another fantastic episode. We hop right back into things with Ghetto vs Toji. Toji gives us some more lore about why he's that guy, but Ghetto interrupts him. This fight ends with Ghetto trying to absorb Toji's little cursed homie, but after that backfires, Toji marks the spot and critically calls Ghetto a monkey before leaving. Toji takes Riko's corpse to the Time Vessel Association and we get this conversation between Toji and the group's leader. 
Toji heads outside, having completed his mission where he runs into Gojo, who is somehow alive. Gojo is cracked out of his mind, tweaking balls after having figured out RCT. This upcoming fight is super interesting. Toji loses the fight before it even begins, because he goes against his own rules. His ego wants to take down the strongest sorcerer in Gojo, but he said previously he never fights for free. Even later, when Toji gets a bad gut feeling, he still continues the fight and it ends up costing him his life, which is a great arc for him. And yeah, this fight between the two is great. Gojo dodges every attack coming his way, hits his red for the first time, and then hits the hollow purple, an attack Toji could have never seen coming, as it was a well-kept secret of the Gojo clan. We see that the hollow purple has given Toji quite the game-ending injury, and Gojo asks him for his final words. Toji initially says he has nothing, but then he tells Gojo about his son who will be shipped to the Zenin clan in a couple of years, and he tells Gojo to do with that info what he pleases before dying. And that brings us to our final scene of the episode, and one of the best of the entire arc. Ghetto makes it to the Time Vessel's church to already find Gojo there with Riko's corpse. Gojo asks if they should kill them all as they clap and cheer for Rico's dead body, but Ghetto says no, because there's no point, and we end with this great shot of the two. And finally, Premature Death is a fantastic wrap-up to this arc. This is the episode where we complete Ghetto's descent into madness. We get a one-year time skip and we catch back up with the trio of Ghetto, Gojo, and Shoko. We see basically Gojo is as powerful as he is in the present, having fully mastered his technique. Because of this, he has been going on more solo missions, which in turn also means Ghetto has been going on more solo missions, and man, he does not look too hot. We get this conversation between Ghetto and Haibara, and that leads us to meet Yuki for the first time. Yuki tells Ghetto about her dream to get rid of cursed spirits, and Ghetto ends up bringing up the option that they could just kill all non-sorcerers, and Yuki tells him that that is an option, but she's not crazy enough to do it. We cut to a bit later and we see that Haibara died on his mission with Nanami, further sending Ghetto down his darker path. And finally, we see Ghetto on a mission at a village where he sees two girls who can see curses being locked up in a cage and abused. This is where Ghetto snaps, and he murders the entire village of non-sorcerers to save the girls. He's then branded as a curse user and sentenced to death, leading to his confrontation with Gojo, another one of the best scenes of the arc. Great cinematography here as we cut back and forth between Gojo and Ghetto as cars fly by in the foreground. Then we get Ghetto's famous line about Gojo. Do you think you're the strongest because you're Satoru Gojo? Or are you Satoru Gojo because you're the strongest? Ghetto ends up walking away while Gojo can't bring himself to kill Ghetto. Ghetto ends up taking over as the new head of the Time Vessel Association, and we see Gojo find Megumi, and he asks him if he wants to go to the Zenin Clan or not. Megumi says no after he learns that his sister wouldn't be able to live a good life if he went, and the arc ends with Gojo waking up from his nap with a smile on his face. A very wholesome end to this arc. And that, ladies and gentlemen, were my thoughts on the hidden inventory slash premature death arc. What did you guys think of this arc? I'm curious to know, so let me know down in the comments section. If you enjoy content like this, like and subscribe for more. Thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful day.